Okay, there you go, Alex. All right, thanks very much. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are uh, uh, ready for our session. Um, uh, this is an early start to the OER conference uh, this year, uh, and it's uh, uh, it's interesting to see how this format uh, uh, pays out. Um, we looks like we're going to be a small and uh, cozy uh, team of uh, 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 people, a uh, few participants. Uh, so we might not need uh, to do a breakout activities. We might just work as a whole, uh, but we'll we'll see uh, when uh, when the time comes. Um, so uh, I'm Alexander Mikroyanidis. Uh, I'm a research fellow at the Open University in the UK, uh, and uh, I'm working mainly on research projects that have to do. Uh, with technology enhanced learning, uh, with uh, 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 personalized learning, uh, with lifelong learning, open educational resources. Um, and lately I've also been working on decentralization uh, and blockchain uh, technologies on uh, education. Um, right, I think we can start. Um, this will be uh, uh, hopefully a participative session, so I'll not spend a lot of time uh, uh, talking through slides. I'll just make a brief introduction of about what this session is, uh, the, the general purpose, the general context of this work, um, and uh, then uh, we'll have some time to do some to do a, uh, an activity together. Uh, to build a learning scenario using uh, some of the elements uh, of, uh, of blockchain technology and, and uh, decentralization. Um, there will be uh, plenty of time for discussion on this scenario and then uh, we'll, we'll close uh, this session. So, um, first of all, a few words about the uh, overall uh, context of this work. So, this is uh, uh, I'm here together, I'm here today on uh, behalf of the Qualitain project. I'm wearing my uh, uh, European Horizon 2020 hat. This is a, a three-year project uh, funded by the Horizon 2020 program uh, and it's currently in its uh, third and final year. Uh, so within this project, we are investigating how we can uh, manage, uh, award, and verify um, qualifications for quali education or employment qualifications on the blockchain in a decentralized manner uh, so that we can uh, essentially empower learners uh, to uh, acquire complete control over their learning process uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, help them with tasks like uh, progress their learning uh, path, uh, acquire uh, 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 a job post, a specific job position, uh, scout the, uh, the job market, um, and um, use uh, uh, decentralization blockchain technologies to their advantage. Uh, we are a consortium of uh, 10 partners and we have not only universities but also some uh, uh, public uh, public sector uh, agencies in Greece and in uh, and in Portugal uh, where we investigate how we can use these technologies blockchain technologies uh, and the decentralization paradigm in in uh, public sector in the public sector for recruiting uh, for example public uh, servants um, and um, uh, and um, making the whole uh, um, recruitment process transparent and uh, immutable. Um, so the the project uh, is investigating uh, uh, four key areas. So we are working on uh, pilots. Uh, in order to engage um, external uh, communities, external stakeholders, and acquire their feedback on 
on, on our approach and on our uh, platform and tools. So we are uh, specifically we are working on uh, pilots on the domains of lifelong learning, uh, on smart curriculum design. This is about adapting um, the uh, the curriculum of uh, 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 within higher education, different curricula within higher education to uh, to address the needs of uh, students and also the, the the current job market trends. Um, we are also, as I mentioned before, we're also working on public sector staffing, recruitment for the public sector. And finally, uh, we have, we are also doing pilots on uh, HR consultancy and uh, competency management services. So the pilot which I am uh, personally leading and mostly invested in is, uh, has to do with lifelong learning. So within this pilot, we are um, uh, working on uh, providing uh, lifelong learners. These are learners that uh, pursue learning throughout their lifetime for either personal or professional uh, uh, purposes. Um, and through this uh, project and through uh, uh, and by using blockchain technologies, we want uh, to do uh, three uh, things. Uh, we want to offer them transparent and mutable accreditation. Uh, we also want to offer them uh, personalized recommendations about jobs uh, that may uh, uh, interest them, that will help them progress their careers, uh, and also about uh, courses that, um, uh, 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 that will offer them the suitable skills to offer to achieve their uh, learning goals. And finally, overall, we want to uh, uh, support uh, lifelong learners in their personal and uh, professional uh, progression. Um, so the main stakeholders we are uh, uh, working with are obviously lifelong learners. Uh, as I mentioned before, le these learners uh, are not confined to a particular um, uh, level uh, uh, of education or mode of education. They pursue learning throughout their lifetime. Uh, they may engage in uh, either formal or informal learning uh, or both depending on their circumstances and their, um, uh, and their, um, uh, and their uh, learning uh, goals, what they want basically to achieve. Um, so educational institutions is the second uh, type of stakeholder we are uh, con uh, uh, liaising with in order to understand their needs uh, when it comes to uh, supporting uh, the best ways to support uh, lifelong learners. Um, and uh, educational institutions are, uh, uh, they provide uh, educational training services. Uh, we are looking into uh, paid ones, paid training in education services or free, uh, for example, MOOCs and open educational resources. So we are, in general, so th these are the main uh, stakeholder groups we are uh, working with in order to better understand their needs and how to, um, uh, how to address this uh, through, uh, through this uh, pilot. So this is the main use case we are looking into. Um, we, you, we can see uh, one at one side we have the lifelong learner and uh, on the other side we have the educational institution. So basically it's a very simple scenario uh, showcasing the, uh, the use of smart badges. So the lifelong learner uh, 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 pursues their learning goals by studying online courses and they are, are awarded uh, with uh, digital smart badges uh, upon completion of, um, uh, of online courses. Uh, so these uh, badges, uh, these smart badges are uh, blockchain uh, based and they offer first of all immutable and instantly uh, verifiable accreditation through the blockchain. Um, actually, it just occurred to me that I've been talking about the blockchain, but I haven't uh, 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 really uh, mentioned what a blockchain is. I'm sure uh, a lot of you will be already familiar uh, with the general concept. I'm not going to go, uh, the, it's not the purpose of this session to go into details of how 
uh, we are using the blockchain, but you can, uh, for the purposes of this uh, session, you can uh, imagine the blockchain, you can understand that bl the blockchain as uh, a, a distributed ledger, a distributed uh, database uh, across uh, uh, the internet, um, uh, a, a, a database that is not uh, centrally controlled by one entity, uh, but it's distributed across different nodes and different machines. Uh, and uh, basically it can, it, what it does, it's uh, apart from taking, uh, apart, apart from uh, decentralizing control, it also offers uh, an immutable uh, a record um, uh, of the data, of its, of its data. So the, uh, the smart badges that we are storing on the, uh, on the blockchain are immutable and can also be instantly verified. Uh, and this can happen even if the institution that awarded the badge uh, does no, no longer exists. For example, it may have merged with another uh, institution, it may have changed uh, its name, it may have transformed it into something different, but the, um, um, uh, the smart badge will always be immutable and, um, uh, and instantly verifiable. The other thing we are doing on top of uh, smart badges uh, is offer personalized recommendations about jobs and courses. So the, the, uh, the smart badge uh, includes the, the key skills uh, that the um, uh, that the um, learner has acquired. So based on these skills, we can match. We can pro we can offer matching uh, services with uh, uh, different uh, with what what is available in the job market, what is advertised uh, uh, in terms of job positions, and also uh, we can uh, uh, offer. Uh, courses, recommendations for courses that will help um, learners progress, acquire additional skills on top of the ones they have already been, uh, they have already acquired. So this is in the next couple of screens, you can see some, um, um, uh, some mock-ups of what the, these recommendations look like. So in this uh, screen, you can see um, uh, on the, on the uh, top half, uh, there is a map that uh, basically shows what jobs are available to the learner. Uh, and uh, this can be filtered based on the preferences of the user, based on the location. Uh, and these are full match. Uh, these are jobs that fully, fully match the skills of the, of the learner. On the bottom half of the screen, uh, we have recommendations for jobs that are a partial match to the uh, uh, to the learner to the skills that the learner has acquired so for these um, uh, for these jobs the learner can um, uh, uh, the, le the learner receives also recommendations about courses that uh, will uh, offer him uh, uh, for him or her the uh, missing uh, skills so if they have um, um, uh, if they are missing, for example, uh, data mining skills, they will be offered a set of, uh, for a particular job, they will be offered uh, a set of courses that will help them uh, acquire uh, this skill. Um, right, so uh, I've been uh, working with different communities of stakeholders, uh, doing some consultation workshops uh, in the past couple of years in order to uh, elicit requirements from groups of learners, uh, educators, uh, researchers, and practitioners. Uh, and I have been going to major educational technology conferences like the ALT conference uh, or the Open Education Global Conference uh, in order to, um, uh, to sit down and uh, uh, talk to uh, these different groups, these different stakeholders, and uh, understand uh, uh, and acquire requirements about um, uh, about this approach. 
um, about supporting lifelong learners, uh, not only within not only uh, within the uh, specific scope of decentralization and the use of blockchain technologies, but also on the general premise of uh, facilitating uh, lifelong learning and addressing the understanding the main challenges and obstacles um, that the lifelong learner faces. So in this uh, next slide, you can see some of the findings, some of the major findings from this uh, consultation exercise so far. So these are, uh, so I have grouped those in four main themes. So in the, in the first theme, we have uh, immutable and formal, immutable formal and informal qualifications. Um, we have, uh, in, uh, according to this uh, uh, requirement, uh, the the learners, lifelong learners, should have uh, agree, should aggregate in their uh, portfolios both formal and informal qualifications, which can then uh, be validated by employers and also educational institutions. So the need to uh, recognize not only formal but also informal uh, learning achievement e achievements is uh, quite prominent. Um, the the second theme has to do with lifelong learning pathways and specifically with micro credentials. Um, so we have uh, a, a very strong need for uh, lifelong learners to receive guidance and scaffolding uh, on building their uh, learning pathways and specifically acquiring flexible accreditation. Uh, for example, micro-credentials. Uh, these are uh, quite prominent uh, these days, uh, especially during these uh, challenging uh, times because of the pandemic, which has resulted in a crisis uh, in education and also in the job market. Things are quite fluid uh, uh, in, in, in the job market and as a result, uh, uh, job seekers and lifelong learners need to acquire need access to flexible uh, accreditation in order to acquire quickly and efficiently the, uh, the key skills um, that will help them um, um, uh, improve their position in the job market or uh, or enter, or even enter the, the job market. Um, so uh, the the third theme is also quite um, uh, quite relevant to the second. Uh, this has to do with career counseling and specifically with uh, comprehensive, with the need to provide job seekers with a comprehensive overview of the job market and also the latest market trends. And finally, in the, uh, uh, the fourth theme has to do with data ownership and privacy, uh, and specifically about uh, enabling learners to uh, own their digital identity and their uh, e-portfolio data, and uh, also being able to control uh, third-party access, uh, meaning who uh, can access their data, uh, in what ways they can access their data, and for how long. Uh, so, for example, if you are applying for a specific job, you don't want to make your whole portfolio, you may not need to make your whole portfolio available, but specific parts uh, that are relevant to the job and also for a, a specific uh, time span. So within this project, within the quality chain project, we are uh, doing this exercise uh, to understand the overall needs and uh, and um, and challenges faced by lifelong learners, and we are looking uh, particularly to uh, to address specific uh, aspects of these uh, uh, needs uh, and help them overcome specific obstacles. For example, with the use of uh, blockchain technologies, we can offer them uh, access. We can offer we can enable them to take control over their data and control privacy. Uh, and ownership uh, over this data. Um, with the, um, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have, uh, with the use of blockchain technologies, you can also offer immutability and instant verification of uh, uh, academic credentials. Um, and uh, with job recommendations, we are looking, job and course recommendations, we are looking into how we can provide some scaffolding and guidance uh, to uh, lifelong learners. Right, so I'm going to pause here for a moment. I, 
uh, I understand this might be uh, a lot to take in, but uh, I think this is a good uh, moment to pause, uh, reflect, and um, uh, answer any questions you may have. You can either uh, write uh, uh, your questions in the chat or you can uh, raise your hands and uh, uh, unmute yourselves and, uh, um, uh, and voice your, uh, your questions. So I can see in the chat that uh, we, we have uh, participants from different parts of the globe, uh, Manchester, uh, uh, Victoria, British Columbia, uh, University of Oklahoma, and Qatar. So uh, great. Uh, we have a nice mix of uh, time zones and uh, weather. Uh, uh, I'm located, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, I'm located uh, in Milton Keynes in the UK, and it's currently quite nice and uh, sunny and warm, which is not uh, very usual, but uh, looks like spring is uh, finally coming. Um, right, okay, and we have someone from the, uh, uh, from uh, Yorkshire, great. Um, right, so Clint, you want to ask a question? Go ahead. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Ah, good, good. Yeah, um, so I have a question. Um, I'm just wondering, it, it's not really related to your pilot, but I noticed that one of the pilots you talked about uh, for your project was around smart curriculum design. And I'm wondering if you can, if, if, I know it is not part of your project, but uh, could you speak a little bit about what that entails and how blockchain is being used for smart curriculum design? So basically, so uh, thanks for the uh, question. And I, I love your uh, mic setup. <laughs> it looks uh, very professional. Um, so um, basically, essentially, uh, within this uh, within this pilot, we have uh, a higher education institution based in Athens, Greece. Uh, this is the National Technical University of Athens, uh, who are looking into uh, how we can um, uh, how they can uh, adapt their curriculum based on the um, um, by doing mining of the skills currently uh, needed in the job market um, and uh, in, uh, uh, at the same time uh, uh, mining also the skills recorded on the uh, learning achievements of their students uh, in order to see, in order to find matches and in order to review basically uh, their, uh, uh, their offered courses, their offered, the, the skills they offer um, um, to, to better match, to better address um, any, uh, 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 any, basically any trends that appear um, in the job uh, market. Um, I can also see there is another question by Adam on the, in the chat. Uh, how would the take-up be encouraged if there is a risk that some may be left behind. I've, I've, this, is, this is a very valid concern and I have been asked this uh, in, other, uh, um, uh, in other conferences and in other uh, events. Um, it is, so, it, the, uh, so the technology is, is here basically to be used by anyone. It's not, we are trying basically to lower the threshold. Uh, and to allow anyone with, uh, for example, a smartphone to, uh, to have a personal, uh, what we call a, 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 a data store, a pod on their phones that, uh, on their phone that basically is their uh, a, a personal portfolio that they control and um, they uh, allow access, uh, third party access to it. So, in a sense, this is about democratizing education in order not to, uh, in order to take some control from educational institutions uh, that are the sole provider of uh, uh, 
of, 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 of basically uh, credentials and everything. They will still be awarding formal qualifications, but we also want to, to empower uh, communities of learners to, um, uh, to do uh, peer assessment and peer award of uh, qualifications for informal in informal contexts, for example. So in this way, we want to, in this sense, we are actually going towards the way of uh, democratizing education, democratizing uh, lifelong learning, uh, offering uh, wider access uh, and greater control to, uh, to lifelong learners and, and um, hopefully improving inclusivity, uh, improving um, uh, um, uh, addressing the social aspects of, uh, of, of lifelong learning. Um, and I can see there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's another question also from Adam about the advantages of uh, smart badges over current open badges. So, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the main advantage, advantage is that you can uh, use uh, you don't need to have uh, you do, uh, uh, when you when you I, I'll, I'll give you a very simple example uh, when you apply to a job uh, your the employer will not need to uh, contact uh, uh, the university uh, a university the university that has awarded you a degree uh, to uh, check to verify that the, the degree is valid but uh, which can take uh, uh, weeks. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, uh, with, the, uh, the, with the smart buds, uh, they will be able to instantly verify that this, this, is, a, uh, this is a valid uh, degree, this is a valid qualification. So this is one very simple example of actually uh, reducing the time, uh, the recruitment time to, uh, to a great extent. Um, and as I mentioned before, there is, this, this also comes in handy, for example, if, you're, uh, if, if, the, if the university that has awarded you a degree no longer exists, they have, uh, they have transformed into a different entity, they have merged with a different university, for example, uh, and that would make uh, things a lot more complicated and a lot more uh, lengthy and uh, requiring requiring more time and effort to uh, to complete the uh, verification process. Any other uh, comments or uh, questions? Obviously, we'll have uh, there will be more um, uh, uh, there will be more opportunities to discuss these uh, these issues uh, in our uh, in our activity. Uh, right now, um, we can. I think we can move to to our group activity, uh, which is about building a learning scenario, uh, specifically for uh, supporting lifelong learning. Um, and since we are uh, we are not such a huge group, I was initially anticipating. Uh, I, I was planning for having separate breakout rooms. But since we are not uh, 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 that many around, I think we can keep it uh, uh, within the main room and discuss and, and keep the discussion going uh, uh, within within a single uh, within a single group. Um, so the um, you can see here I have set up uh, an external tool uh, called uh, 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 Miro. Uh, to uh, basically simulate um, the the kind of um, uh, the kind of interaction we would have um, uh, if we, if we were to do this uh, uh, um, activity face to face uh, on a board uh, using um, um, uh, using stickers. Um, so what uh, I, what I would like you to think about is. Uh, different aspects of a learning scenario, and how this uh, and, and how within this learning scenario, uh, the uh, um, the blockchain the elements of blockchain and decentralization can be used uh, to uh, to address specific requirements to address specific needs uh, of learners. So um, and. Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, but the, uh, the scenario does not have to be exclusively about blockchain uh, decentralization. It can be generally about uh, lifelong learning, 
uh, or open education uh, 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 and uh, different types of technology uh, that can be used to uh, that can be used uh, 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 to to uh, to facilitate this uh, to facilitate this scenario and address uh, requirements. Um, so uh, I have um, uh, I have created a board which I can um, share, which I can show you. Uh, I can show you the live version of this board um, in a minute. Yes, I can share my screen. So you should be able to see my uh, screen right now. So we have basically four areas. Uh, the first one is uh, about the personas. Uh, who are the typical users in this scenario and what do they wish to accomplish? Uh, the second uh, area is about the requirements. What uh, does a persona uh, from this scenario wants to, uh, to do so that they achieve a specific goal? Uh, the third uh, area has to do with the use of blockchain. Uh, how do you uh, envision uh, the blockchain to be used, can be used in this scenario? Uh, and finally, uh, uh, related sources is anything that you can think of, any links, uh, projects, or other resources that you can think are, might be relevant, might, might be useful to consider uh, for, this, uh, for this scenario. So uh, I'll, um, uh, uh, I can. Uh, I would like to give uh, the floor to you uh, to uh, to start up to to uh, to, um, uh, uh, to start brainstorming your ideas, um, and I'll I'll uh, and I'll be taking notes. I'll be sticking. Uh, I'll be doing the sticky notes on the uh, on the board. So the floor is yours. You don't need to, to go through uh, uh, this specific uh, sequence. Uh, you can jump into any, uh, you can stick, uh, you can propose a sticker uh, for any of these, uh, for any of these uh, boards, uh, not necessarily with the, with the order, person, uh, requirements, use of blockchain related sources. Uh, you can, anything that jumps to, uh, that comes to mind, uh, feel free to um, uh, write uh, something in the chat or uh, or uh, uh, unmute uh, and uh, um, and uh, um, uh, speak out your um, your idea so um, it's usually difficult yeah to start with a blank canvas um, I can maybe start with proposing a persona, uh, for example, a typical user uh, that I am uh, looking into um, uh, quite um, uh, with quite a lot of interest is uh, the lifelong learner. Uh, so I can uh, write. Um, uh, I like so I can uh, include I can write um, uh, some of their uh, characteristics uh, they wish they wish to uh, get uh, uh, a promotion uh, or a better job. So I've done my sticky note there. Um, so as um, um, Yes, uh, so I can see some uh, comments on the chat. I'm, I'm being silent because I was reading the chat. Um, I can, um, 
Yes, I will. The, the, uh, the idea is uh, uh, that um, uh, we can, I can actually give, uh, uh, provide access to everyone on, uh, to, uh, uh, to have a look and possibly edit this, uh, this map, this board. So I'm pasting the link into the chat so everyone, so you can join in uh, and I don't have to do all the work. Um, and um, uh, but you'll need to uh, the only um, um, uh, the only thing is that you'll need to log in or create a free account a Google using your Google login for example to access this map. I can see someone already has already uh, joined. Um, so the um, um, uh, so I can so there is a, a comment from. Uh, uh, John about uh, uh, having adding the manager in a firm uh, for either promoting or hiring uh, lifelong learners. So I'll add that to the um, to the map. So I can see already um, uh, um, uh, Debbie, uh, John, and uh, um, uh, Sami. Yeah, um, have have um, uh, joined. Um, it's it's really cool to see the uh, the board being uh, populated uh, in real time. So you can, uh, um, uh, while you while you're editing, you can also unmute your microphones and uh, share uh, what you're uh, doing. I understand it's uh, it might be a bit awkward uh, to do this online. It usually comes uh, more naturally uh, to do this uh, face to face uh, and discuss. Um, um, uh, and, and, and have some conversations around this. So um, um, I, I can see some sticky notes already on the board, but feel free to uh, jump in and uh, share your thoughts as well. So I can see we have a school or other a credential granting agency added as a persona uh, on the board. Uh, that's good. Obviously, we need this kind of uh, these are um, um, uh, this is the kind of stakeholders we are looking uh, to include in this um, uh, in this scenario. So what I'll do is give you some time uh, to have a look, to have a think. And uh, uh, and stick and and do your um, uh, and populate write on some sticky notes and um, and I'll um, uh, I'll come back uh, in a few minutes. Yes, yes, some background music would be nice, some elevator music <laughs> would be nice. <laughs> it's it's always it's quite um it's quite amusing just to see everybody's little name flying about on the screen really, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. It almost yeah simulates uh, um, yeah this face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, interaction we would normally be having. Um, I've done this this exercise a lot in uh, in, in, in in physical in, in a face to face setting, and it's mm. uh, uh, yes, it's, it's it's quite different, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do this, yeah, trying to do this online. 
um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's, it's quite different. Um, yeah, but um, um, th basically, yeah, these are the main, uh, uh, these are the main areas um, uh, I would like, yeah, uh, uh, our participants to, uh, to consider uh, in order to specify this. Uh, to, to, to provide a, a, a high-level description of, uh, of, uh, of a learning scenario uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from uh, 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 drawing from experiences, drawing from uh, uh, not necessarily personal experiences, but drawing from professional, um, uh, their professional expertise as well. Um, the other thing uh, I should mention, the other thing I was planning to do during the session is um, uh, provide you access to the actual uh, a platform that is being built by the project, uh, which basically uh, uh, um, implements what I talked about, this, the scenarios uh, that I mentioned before about using smart badges uh, and providing uh, personalized recommendations to learners. But unfortunately, this is not, it's not possible to do this uh, right now, there's still uh, the platform is still under development. I was hoping it would be early for for an early for a, for a, for an early it would be ready. I hope I was hoping it would be ready for an early uh, for early access uh, um, uh, as a beta uh, version uh, today. But uh, looks like uh, we will have to uh, to postpone that. Uh, I'll mm -hmm. have. Uh, there is uh, you can keep uh, you can keep in touch with the project. Um, I have the um, uh, the details in my last slide, uh, so you can have um, uh, you can access it. Uh, you can try it out as soon as it's launched. It shouldn't be more than a few weeks um, uh, time. Um, uh, so yeah, unfortunately, we, we will not be able to do a more uh, practical uh, session, uh, a more practical exercise, and, and try the uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, the actual platform and um, uh, and and, um, and 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 get a, a smart badge for your participation. The plan was to have a, uh, to award you to, to award participants with with a smart badge uh, specifically designed for this session, uh, which would include the the, the skills, uh, the uh, uh, blockchain and decentralization related skills um, uh, related to this uh, to this session. Mm. Uh, but there will be uh, there will be other opportunities. To do that, uh, if you have uh, for alt members, uh, there is there is an upcom upcoming uh, uh, um, uh, professional development uh, series, uh, which will which is already I think it's already kicked off. It's al it's already started, and I will be doing a session next month um, uh, around this work, and hopefully. Uh, by then, we, there will be a live version of the platform will be available to uh, to try out and um, uh, and have a first-hand experience. Mm, that's, I mean, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously, we're looking at open digital badges in Alt, um, just generally. Um, we're, I noticed an interesting question that John has put on um, on one of the sticky notes because he's talking about the what are the benefits of blockchain as compared to say linkedin for this type of use case or project um and i suppose my own um where i get confused is is and i think adam asked this question as well it was in relation to the differences between open digital badges and then blockchain so how those kind of things fit together mm. or maybe don't fit together so Basically, yeah, we're trying to, to build on top of uh, open badges. Obviously, we're reusing and extending the open badge uh, specification. Mm -hmm. um, but we, at the same time, yeah, we're trying to... Uh, I've got some echo. Uh, um, uh, we are trying to make, uh, to take advantage of, the, of what the blockchain has to offer in terms of immutability and in wow. terms of uh, instant verification. Mm. 
-hmm. And I can see there's a couple more questions from John on the, in the chat. Uh, what, the, what is the environmental impact or impact of the blockchain? This is a very good question because yeah, the Bitcoin blockchain is, I agree, it's totally, it's, it's, it's environmentally terrible. Uh, so we are, we are uh, using the Ethereum platform, which is a bit better uh, than the Bitcoin uh, uh, blockchain. And uh, uh, there is there's a few technical workarounds. Obviously, we can't um, uh, we can't take away. It, it, this is a this is the price of uh, scalability with with the blockchain. The the, the, the bigger it gets, uh, it's it's it, it doesn't scale uh, great, and it's not very good for the environment as well. You have um, uh, in terms of the processing power needed. So there is a few workarounds and tricks. Um, uh, I'm not a very technical. I'm not very technical uh, uh, with uh, in, uh, with with this uh, with this. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I don't know exactly the details of this um, uh, of these uh, of these workarounds. But there is a few things like uh, I think it's uh, called a parity, where you can actually offload. You, there is, there's, uh, and there's also the uh, the off-chain um, uh, storage, where you because it's quite pricey and quite uh, um, processing. Uh, it requires it, it quite it, it's quite um, um, uh, expensive in terms of processing power to put everything on the blockchain. The idea is that you have uh, uh, that you store most of the data off-chain in uh, IPFS in protocols like. Uh, 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 file systems uh, that are uh, distributed, that are, that are decentralized, and uh, are put only hashes. These are the key. Uh, you can think of those as keys uh, in, on the blockchain. Uh, uh, hashes that point to the external uh, storage. And the second question from John is: What are the controls? Uh, or for who gets to grant micro credentials or other information into the blockchain. If anyone can grant a badge, do we run into the into issues of having to constantly evaluate the credibility? So this is um, um, this is a, this is a very good point. Um, these are great questions. I agree with Debbie. Um, so the um, uh, so you need to have, of course, you need to have different roles uh, within the. Um, Within the uh, within the uh, within the blockchain, so an edu educational institution needs to be uh, authenticated as a as a uh, as a node as a, as a, as, a, as an authority that can award the badge, uh, and of course, yeah, this the, the, the awarded badge will have a different um, say, let's say, gravitas than a badge awarded uh, by uh, by another learner. So. Um, because the whole um, uh, the whole process and the whole record, the blockchain record is transparent, uh, so you can uh, you can see anyone can see the criteria uh, where with which the uh, with which a, a badge has been has been awarded. So obviously, an employer will um, uh, uh, will uh, judge differently uh, a badge that has been awarded for completing. Uh, uh, a higher education module compared to a badge that has been awarded by a fellow uh, em employee, for example, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, a for, for a particular uh, work-related uh, skill. Uh, the key thing is that the, 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 the criteria, the awarding criteria for, um, uh, for awarding, uh, the criteria for awarding uh, a badge are uh, transparent and and because they're on the blockchain, they're immutable as well. They can't be tampered uh, with. So I can see there is already a few sticky notes uh, on the board. Uh, I can see that uh, uh, you, you have uh, mentioned requirements regarding managers uh, needing to find someone with certain skills to hire uh, or getting in the shoes of a lifelong learner wanting to take a MOOC uh, to improve skills for a promotion in a particular, sorry, excuse me, uh, in a particular field um, and using the blockchain uh, to query uh, and see who has micro-credentials that we are 
looking for. These are all very valid. Um, um, uh, uh, these are all very valid uh, comments. So in the uh, uh, in, because we have uh, we don't have uh, a lot of time left, as Debbie reminds us. Uh, I'll get back to my uh, slides. I don't have uh, much else to say. Uh, let me go back to my final slide to um, basically give you the uh, contact um, to show you how you can get in, you can stay in touch. So the project is finishing at the end of this year. So until then, uh, uh, we will be uh, launching, very, we will, will be very soon launching our uh, platform which addresses these main scenarios that I described uh, and will be open to the public. So feel free to uh, stay in touch through our website, uh, our social media, uh, our newsletter to uh, learn uh, uh, the, latest to, uh, uh, the latest about this work. Uh, and hopefully, I should I should see uh, some of you in some future events that I have planned uh, within the alt uh, community. For example, in the uh, in the professional development uh, series that I uh, that I mentioned before. So thank you very much for for joining this session. Uh, I hope you have found it uh, useful. And uh, let me uh, uh, wish you uh, to en let me wish you a, a, a good day and enjoy the uh, rest of the conference. Thanks very much. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. That's uh, really, really uh, helpful. And um, I think we we did lose a couple of participants towards the end there. But um, the uh, yeah, I thought that was. Um, that was really interesting. I'd like to talk to you some more at some point about blockchain, just to kind of get my head around it a bit more. But um, that was really great. Thank you so much. Really, really good. I'm. Uh, I'll. I'll just stop the recording now, and then. Uh, and then we can. Um, we can move on. I. I'm not sure. John is still with us. I don't know if John had any questions before I just stopped the recording. Any further ones? Maybe you don't have a mic, John. Do. You? <laughs> No, thanks. All right. No worries. I'll just stop the recording now then. <laughs>